You are literally here because you probably saw some gurus online or short form videos of people talking up dropshipping like crazy. They're showing you how much money you make, how easy it is. So you end up watching some of their videos, you believe them, and then you scroll down to the description and you see a course priced at $15,000 to learn how to do this. Which probably brought you to this video, does dropshipping actually work? Now there's nothing wrong with coaching and charging people money for a knowledge that you're sharing to them that can make them more money, but it really has gotten a bad rep. And of course, there are people out there that have never ran a dropshipping store or maybe had one lucky month, and now they think that they're qualified to teach you X, Y, and Z for $20,000. It really is unfortunate for the space, to be honest with you, but it does happen in every other space as well, so you can't really beat it. So does dropshipping really work, or is it just this big hoax for people to take your money and teach you how to do it? So I'm going to give you my honest opinion. And if you've been following my channel, you're thinking to yourself, Austin, you post about dropshipping nonstop on your channel. You're just like every other guru out there. Sure, I like to post about dropshipping on YouTube and I've been in this space for over six years, multiple seven figure online stores and businesses all revolving around e-commerce. Basically, I'm qualified and no, I'm not going to push you into a course in this video. This is strictly informative and my personal experience and information that I want to share to you guys before you even think about getting started. So me, in my personal opinion, does dropshipping work? The short answer is yes. But then why do you look at the success and failure rate of people that start a dropshipping store and it says that 90% fail who start? The moral of the story, does it work? Yes. Does it work for everyone? No. Is it easy? Yes and no, but let me explain. Dropshipping is easy in the sense that you can start up for a very low amount up front. You really don't have to invest that much money. It's more investing your time. Compared to other businesses that can profit you a lot, you would actually need a lot more capital to start. Dropshipping is one of those businesses where you don't have to have any inventory. You don't have to put a lot of money up front, which makes it really, really easy and the barrier to entry very, very low, which is why a lot of people actually start it and try it. So in theory, it's easier to start than other businesses, but it's actually harder to execute than a lot of other businesses. So I've worked with a lot of people in this space now for over six years, and I see a lot of people fail and I see a lot of people succeed. So what actually separates the winners from the losers? Well, obviously the biggest thing is giving up, right? So everyone online makes dropshipping out to be the easiest thing ever to do. You started in four steps and then you are a millionaire and you have a Lamborghini next week. You're good to go. If it was that easy, every single person on this planet would be doing it. All good things actually take time and effort to perfect. You can't just stumble upon something one day and then you're rich. That's just not how the world works, unfortunately. So I see a lot of people get attracted to the idea of dropshipping and then they try it for a week, learn that it actually takes a lot more time and effort than they think and a lot of skills to learn so they give up within a week. I personally broke even on my first official dropshipping store for three and a half months before turning profitable. There are not a lot of people out there that would continue to lose money and invest their time for three and a half months in something that they weren't even sure worked. But that's one thing that also separates the winners from the losers is they don't give up. I know someone that tried dropshipping for seven months, not making any money at all, wasting their time, apparently, spending a lot of money on advertisements, websites, all these things. But after seven months, their next full month, they did over $100,000. Imagine if they gave up three weeks in six months in. The other thing I see a lot is people that rush the process, right? So many people get hyped up from short form videos or YouTube videos, and they're like, I'm gonna start my dropshipping store. They build out their store in like three days. They find a random product that they think is cool because they just have no reason behind it. They pull all the images from AliExpress. They put up some really bad ad creatives, and then they just don't get any sales. They don't get any conversions. And they're like, oh, it doesn't work. I tried. Obviously, if you do it that way, you are not gonna succeed in anything. Right? If you put an hour and a half of work into something, it's just not gonna work. You cannot rush the process. If you take your time to actually learn the skills that are gonna move the needle for you in dropshipping, you have a way better chance of succeeding rather than just rushing every single step of the process hoping to hit it rich. A lot of people that I see fail also focus on the wrong things. They are so fixated on either finding this magical winning product that no one's ever seen before. And if they could just find that, then they would be a millionaire overnight. All they have to do is plug that into their Shopify store and they're good to go. That is just not the truth. There's so much more that goes into it in advertising and website design. This magical winning product is not gonna change your life. Sorry to break that news to you. Now let's talk about some of the traits of the winners that I see people actually succeed in dropshipping. They focus on building the skills that are required to run a successful e-com brand. That consists of marketing angles, web design, consumer psychology, 
product photography, creatives, ad strategy, suppliers, etc. There's so many actually moving pieces when you're building out your dropshipping store or your e-com brand that not a lot of people talk about and they make it seem super easy, but you have to manage all those things yourself because you're a one-man team. You're building this by yourself. It might sound overwhelming, but the skills that you actually learn while building your own business online are considered high income skills. And you can take these skills and move them into anything else. If you don't like dropshipping anymore, if it didn't work out for you the way you wanted it to, let's say you're fantastic at web design. Okay, great. You learned that skill from starting your dropshipping business. Now you can take this and say, hey, look at all these stores that I've built. Can I do this for you? I'll charge you a thousand, two thousand dollars to build this store in the same quality that I have my own stores in. And that's when you can start an agency and move into other elements of e-com that would have never been opened up to you if you didn't learn these skills yourself. I truly believe that if you learn one to three of the high income skills that dropshipping teaches you, you will never have to work a nine to five again. You might not be a dropshipper. You might not do that forever. You might have an agency you might be a freelancer. There are so many different options and directions that you can take these high income skills to make a high income without having a nine to five. I also see a lot of winners kind of treat e-commerce in dropshipping like a video game in a way. They're almost addicted to it. For example, the guy that I was referencing earlier on that was not making any money for seven months until he turned profitable, he treated it like an addictive video game. He wanted to get better and better, move on to the next level, learn a new skill, really push himself to understand what makes up great marketing angles or what makes up great web design. And if you think about it, it is kind of like a game. So you're putting all these puzzle pieces and skills together until they're all perfect and you are max level and then you're winning the game of not having a nine to five or making the money that you wanna make. It's a pretty cool way to look at it and look at money in general and income, but if that's not really the way you like to look at things, you like to get your you know pay stub every two weeks, this is probably not the business for you because you never know when your next check is gonna come in or if you're gonna make more money next month, you're gonna lose money the month after. You just don't know. There's so much uncertainty, but if you can handle that, then you are probably built for some form of entrepreneurship. Which kind of brings me to my next point. The people that I see succeed are always improving and always learning. They don't just stop after they found one winning product that happened to work and they made $30,000 in that month and they're like, okay, I'm just going to run this forever until I die. That's just not the case. Something will go wrong and you want to be prepared for it. They're looking at it in a different way. Hey, this winning product and this winning marketing angle and ad creative work together. Okay. I'm making this much money a day. How can I actually improve it by 10%? How can I improve it by 20%? Let's try this iteration. Let's try this colorway. Let's try saying this in the ad. They do that five, six, seven, ten 10 times and maybe nine of the 10 don't improve the ad, but there's that one that increases it 50% profitability. This is unlike any other nine to five. You can directly make impacts into the business by the amount of effort that you put into your business, which is also a great thing because the more effort you put in, the better the business runs, the more money you make. It's pretty straightforward. And that's why entrepreneurship in general was really attractive to me because I was working in supply chain chain where I got the same paycheck over and over again until I got a promotion. And it didn't really seem like the effort I put in to get that promotion was equivalent to the pay I was getting. So I was always looking for a way out and really valued how much time and effort I put into something should be the exact same amount I get out income wise. And that ties into the next point. The winners are always testing, right? So like I was talking about with ad creatives, you can always be testing a new thing. Trust me, just because something works does not mean it's always going to work. You should always be testing. I mean, I personally learned that the hard way. Long story short, I was running a successful ad campaign. I was spending $5,000 a day in it. Shopify had this issue where they were shut down. I lost like $2,000 or something in that day. And then that ad creative, once it came back online, was not profitable anymore for whatever reason. There was literally nothing to attribute it to. But I wasn't prepared for that, right? I was on vacation at the time. I wasn't testing the next step. I was just kind of living life without working for a little bit. So if you're always testing, you're always going to be a step ahead of whatever bad thing is going to happen in your business. And trust me, they will happen. So that's my honest opinion of if dropshipping works or not. I hope I gave you guys a little bit more understanding about how hard it actually is, but how easy it is at the same time if you can commit your time and effort to it. And honestly, don't start dropshipping if you can't commit your time, you get bored easily, you don't really care about e-commerce, it's not fun to you. You just see it as like a number or a paycheck or a fancy car. Don't start dropshipping, you're gonna fail. You should be motivated by working for yourself, have an actual interest in e-com, look at it kind of like a video game, and really value how much time and effort that you put into something is how much income that you should make from it. But you also need to be able to take on risks a little bit if you want to do it full time. You just don't know when something's going to shut down or go wrong and you might lose income for a week or two or a month. You have to be okay with those ups and downs and stresses. I just wanted to come on here and say that and give my honest opinion because I feel like a lot of people are searching for it and there's not that much honesty in the space. So I just wanted to put it out there and just be straightforward about it in my opinion and what it takes to actually become successful. All right, guys, thank you.
thank you for watching. If it sounds like something that you wanna learn, just subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got a ton of free tutorials. I'm posting two videos a week. I've also got a ton of free resources down below in the description, free custom stores, free courses, free list of 200 plus winning products. Basically everything that you need to get started if you do wanna start after watching this video. All right guys, thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.